What's going on everybody? Gunner here and today we're going to be tying the soft hackle muddler. Check it out. All right, guys, sticking with the trend, like and comment, I'll give the fly away anywhere in the world. In fact, I'll probably give two of them away because I'm feeling generous. <laughs> but all you got to do is like and comment. In a week, I'll pick somebody out of that comment list just randomly uh, and send out these flies to check out. Now, it is tied on the size two. It happens to be the A-Rex NS-115, which is the Nordic Salt Deep Streamer. Uh, really nice, heavy wire gauge, black nickel finish, uh, pretty stout hook. Uh, and it is designed for salt, Nordic salt. So it is uh, a hook that can be taken into that saltwater realm if you're fishing for like redfish or something, but it also has really nice freshwater applications. So keep that in mind with those likes and comments. Basically, all you need to tie the fly is some soft hackle with chickaboo. This happens to be the whiting soft hackle with chickaboo patch. It is unreal, super sick. Um, and then all you need is basically a, a skin. This happens to be, I dropped the sheet over there, uh, the Whiting American series. So if you go to their website, it's the Whiting American Rooster Saddle. And they are sick. Probably the greatest streamer hackles on the freaking planet. Uh, but the thing that's really, really cool about buying a full saddle like this is all the variation in your length, including these super sick webby schlopping feathers. But when I was looking at this skin the other day, I have all these really small saddles up here. I was like, man, what would I do with those? What would I do with those? And then I was like, pheasant rump muddler, do you remember that thing? It was sick. And so I watched an old fishing video with the pheasant rump muddler and it was just crushing it left and right. And I was like, these little guys, these little micro saddles are the perfect tailing material for that whole pheasant rump series. Because the pheasant rump feathers are a little bit wide, a little bit broad, and I used them and they fished really well, but these saddles are picture perfect. So, I got some inspiration from that. We're tying basically a classic styled muddler head with a saddle tail, and then we're just using the barred chickaboo as an overwing with a nice soft hackle collar behind the deer hair. Super simple fly. Uh, you do want some nice straight deer hair. You want all the kind of color change right at the tips. You don't want any fur in there. You don't want any colics in there. This happens to be a hairline dubbin primo strip, which refers to the length of the strip, not the quality of the hair. But it was a primo strip that I have cut the waist off. Uh, but all perfectly straight. Really nice coarseness to it, a little bit of waviness, which is going to indicate a lot of trapped air in there. And it doesn't feel very soft. It feels nice and coarse, right? So it doesn't have a lot of that under fur hair in there either. Really high quality patch. So one more thing before we jump into this. Well, besides the fact that I have this sweet, ugly Christmas sweater on with the swim bait logo, <laughs> but you can check those out. But anyway, not what I was getting to. Um, but I have a friend who lives down in St. Paul area and his name's Tony. And Tony designed a fly that will forever in my mind be the greatest smallmouth bass pattern in history. It's called the Wilder Dilch. And literally for like the past four years, I've been trying to subtly knock it off. Basically, that's what I've been trying to do. It was the inspiration for the Fuzz Jr., probably like the most epic smallmouth baitfish fly on the planet. It was the information or inspiration for the Pheasant Rump Muddler back when I combined that with the Jason Taylor Pheasant Rump series. And it's the inspiration for this. It's basically the only reason I tie muddlers is because the Wilder Dilch will live on forever as like the greatest smallmouth bass pattern. I'm not going to show it to you. I'm going to let Tony do it in his time if he ever feels the inclination to do it. But um, <clears throat> this is my variation of that. So keep that in mind. Let's tie the soft hackle muddler. So that's the NS-115. 
115 deep Nordic salt deep black and little finish pretty stout little hook coming in with six thousandths of an inch Danville mono you're seeing the trend this stuff's the bomb you got a little bit bigger flies use the v-vis eight thousandths but six thousandths will get you started for just about everything putting on a nice beefy thread base I did start that at the hook eye but that's because I'm pretty comfortable with the proportions if you're not comfortable with the proportions start your thread like back here that way you have nice two spots to spin some deer here right up here at the head uh, but otherwise we'll get you locked and loaded here and put down a nice thread base so just consistent circular thread pressure wrap all the way back wrap all the way forward make sure that that thread cannot slip on that shank at all so that everything is nice and stout and it should be very aggressive very high friction right so materials don't slip come into that uh, Whiting Farms American streamer saddle look at these feathers man they are so sick um, so you're just going to grab and the, the other thing that's just unbelievable about having a full skin like this is obviously there's pairs of everything at the same length at the same webbiness and everything right so finding hackles for this becomes more or less effortless because you can just come into the skin bend it flex it find two feathers next to each other and I just have perfect paired saddles that I can use for this tail. Aside from the fact that that color is just gnarly. Now I'm going to cut these up into this marabou section. That's where you want to cut them because up here on a saddle, that marabou section is where the stems get nice and kind of rounded out and even ovalized into the orientation of that feather. So it gets ovalized this way, which means you can put them dead on the side of the hook and they'll ride perfectly straight. So I'm going to take that saddle feather, walk it just to the underside, let my thread torque pull it up. Use your thumbnail if you need to. Now with only two th turns of thread on there, I'm going to cinch that down pretty hard, put some wraps forward and some wraps back so that my wraps holding that down cannot back off. I made a little Chinese finger trap, forward back. That way that thread's super tight and I don't have a lot of build back here yet because i got to fit another feather on come in now I'm gonna put this one slightly on top so that as I catch that with my thread the thread torque pulls it down to the side again you can use your fingernail just to make sure it's perfect I'm gonna hold it in place as I apply tension so it doesn't move on me a few wraps forward and back now I'm gonna suck my bobbin nose super tight to my shank here and just make sure all that is nice and locked in Look at that tail, look at that tail. Micro saddle, mini muddler. How sick is that? I'm just excited thinking about it. These little s saddle shafts, man, don't throw those away. We're gonna use that for some dubbing. You're just gonna come in here, you're gonna cut against the grain. Don't peel it off with your fingers because you'll get some membranes from the stem on there and they won't make a very nice clean dubbing. Now, if you recall, we're gonna have one uh, soft hackle that we're going to collar the fly with. So I'm going to come and select that now. I want a nice beefy webby soft hackle off this skin. Look at that. Just absolutely disgusting. And so when I collar that I'm going to use basically the nice stiff fibers and down. So I can cut that off here and this is all marabou dubbing that I can use to build up the core and the volume and the taper of my fly. So again, cut that down the shaft. And just, I'm making a pile of it on my desk. I know you guys can't see that, but there's just a nice pile down here on my desk. Now, because I like to make things more complicated for the sake of enjoyment and realis realism, I suppose, but take some flashaboo dubbing. It's just shredded mylar and a nice complementary color scheme here. And it's just a pinch. You don't need a crazy amount. But just drop that on top of all those feathers. And you just kind of like toss a salad. Like that's all you're doing. This isn't like super go ham on the blending. It has to be perfect. Because you're going to dub it on your thread. And that's going to blend it. And you're going to wrap it forward and rib it. And it's going to get blended. Like just toss a salad. You're good to go. <clears throat> Dubbing wax. Critical for this. Come in here. Touch up that mono so it's nice and tacky. Try not to breathe too hard or you'll send marabou dubbing all over the place. Just touch it onto that thread. And the way you dub, if you've never dubbed before, but you roll your fingers in the same direction over top of one another. And now instead of fly tying thread, I have feather thread, which is even sicker. 
come up here, stop right about there, and I'm just gonna leave all that stuff on there. Like I could, I literally couldn't care less really what that looks like. You can even rib it down and back for durability. But you're just building up a taper. That mono's clear under all of that. You can't ever tell. And then we're just gonna pick it out when we're done. <clears throat> but now you're gonna come in with the chickaboo. And the chickaboo is chicken marabou. And it's the absolute kind of perfect density, stem length, webbiness, pickiness. And because this was a grizzly dyed hide, the barring is an artificial barring, it's real barring. And so there's no like weird dye deterioration of the feather. A lot of time when you get white feathers that are dyed barred, uh, that barring effect really screws with how the feather actually functions. Not a fan of that. So I'm just kind of measuring that off so it lands just over that tail. Come in, nice clean catch. Put like two or three wraps on it, lift it up. I'm gonna use that to build up some volume here. So I'm gonna catch it down. Again, just so we can build some taper, right? Just simple things. Come in with some more wax. Now you can make this pretty bumpy, right? You want like some good beef to this, which is why we left that marabou stem on there. Wrap that up, wrap that forward. Trap it. Now I have quite a bit of extra leftover marabou dubbing. You can save that or you can let it get all over your house. Whatever you want to do, it's really your choice. I'm going to come in with my soft tackle. I'm going to preen away the fibers. So I have just a bare stem. I'm going to lay it 45 degrees across the top of my hook shank. And I'm just going to catch that. Put some thread turns down and a little half hitch. Grab those tips with some hackle pliers and preen that back, control that orientation, wrap it clockwise. That way when you catch it with your thread, you're just adding tension to it. And look how, I mean, these soft hackles, as far as putting collars on bugs and that chickaboo, if you wanted like the ultimate little warm water, tying your boogle bugs and all that stuff, collar material, that soft hackles, where to go. Whiting. Soft tackle, chicken boot patch. So I caught that. I'm gonna put some thread over the top here. When I feel like it's trapped down well enough, I'm gonna grab that tip and break it off. Look how perfect that collar and beef is. Oh, it's sick. Now I'm gonna wrap back over that stem. It'll collapse everything a little bit, but now I don't have any exposed stem, so the stem can't ever break. <clears throat> Come in with one more patch of marabou here. And make sure these wings are staggered. There's some taper here, right? I don't, they don't end at the same place. Come up with a clean catch. Oh, I want to fish this for smallmouth right now. But it's November. It's not happening. Not happening for a long, long time. <laughs> Cut that nice and close. All right, now I got just this room right here to basically do a collar spin and then a head spin. That's all you're doing, just a collar spin and a head spin. And honestly, you could probably just take that right up to the head and fish it without deer hair and fish it you know, on floating lines and let the weight of the hook, because it's a heavy, deep hook, the hook weight's designed to be your sink rate, more or less. You could fish that basically as a wet fly and swing it. It'd be like a variation of Kelly Gallup's, uh, what's he call it, smoke wagon, right? It'd be like a single hook, barely legal, with saddle tails, more or less, but a soft tackle version. So totally do that. You should have variation in your box. Tie one buoyant with deer hair for your sink tips and split shot and all the other variations. You can do that. And tie one weightless for your floating lines and kind of wet fly swing bait fish presentation, which would be sick. Should have thought of that before I made the video, but here we are. Here we are. Now, I don't know how many of you guys watching are dreading the deer hair part. I don't know, but I'm going to walk you through it so that you get it right. So you got your primo strip. Now this hair is designed for tying like, you know, sex dungeon collars, like big long, like I would use it at full length to tie a big meaty sculpin profile pectorals. <clears throat> but it still works in this small size. Uh, you want a pretty sparse amount. This fly is not very big. You could way overdress this. It doesn't need to be a lot. So I have just a sparse amount for my collar. Now I'm gonna grab the tips. 
I'm going to spin my fingers and I don't know if you saw how much that opened up, but it opened up like crazy and it allows me to get access to the waist, both short hair and the actual like furry insulative stuff. Now I don't have a hair packer. I gave it to some kid at a fly show once and I haven't ever bought a new one because you can just drop this in your hand and I'm just lightly, lightly letting gravity pack that and get all my tips oriented into the same direction here. And with my tips more or less the same length, look, that's pretty epic for being hand packed. Now you want to pick your length here. I want it like maybe just halfway down that top marabou wing. I don't need it like way back here, like just halfway down that marabou wing. So you need a lot of control here on your length. And I'm going to cut that basically tight to where I wanted it. I'm going to cut it even tighter. Now if you're not comfortable with deer hair work, Cutting deer hair that tight, that vertically, is probably going to be scary. <laughs> but you got to come up with a slack thread. You got to add some tension to it, give it some love, a little bit more and a little bit more. Now that three wraps, you know, I'm not asking a lot of you guys to do three wraps. Then just take your thumbnail and mash that stuff down. And it'll move around the hook perfectly 360 degrees. And you see I just pinch it and pinch it and pinch it. And then I'm just going to basically spin it with just a smooth draw of the thread. And now I have a collar. I'm going to move those butts back away from that eye. And just leave them there because it, it literally doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'm going to come back. Now for the head, you can use a little bit more hair than you use for the collar. Because you do, I mean, it's a deer head. It's supposed to be buoyant, like, you know. I don't really know how to gauge that for you guys being on a video. I can't like have you pinch it. People always say pencils, it's probably half a pencil, right? We're not tying a hair bug, but we're tying a deer hair head. Again, I'm going to grab those tips and spin it. Ooh, freed up everything. Look at all that garbage. Look at all this garbage, garbage. Now this time you're not going to pack the tips. You want the butts all together in a line. So again, I can pack those butts, but I just cut them off the hide so they shouldn't be too disoriented. And I'm going to cut that relatively close cuz this is a small fly. You don't need, you know, an inch and a half of hair. You need oh, even that might be a little long, but it's okay cuz we'll trim it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to lay that right over the nose. I'm going to try to loosely pinch it directly at the midpoint. Now when you come around here, I'm going to suck my bobbin up close to my hook shank beforehand. So I'm right at the hook shank. I can see in the camera my finger is just in the way. Can you see that? It's a little better. You can see the hook eye. Look how close my bobbin is. I'm going to pull out only the amount of thread I need to grab it with slack and tuck it right back under that hook eye. Come up, make the same thread path. Come up, make the same thread path. Now again, look, that's actually got caught like perfectly 50-50, which is sick because normally that's hard to do. Just shove your thumb into it. Pinch that stuff, shove your thumb into it, pinch that stuff, and you're trying to get it to move around the hook all on its own and not do the whole spin technique where you catch it all on top and spin it around because what happens is it doesn't spin perfectly symmetrically and you get a way higher density on one side of your fly and then you have all this buoyancy and all this resistance over there and your fly doesn't track right. Squeeze it around, squeeze it around, and then spin it. And you can check the hook eye and be like, are you symmetrical? No, there's a little bit more over here. Pinch and pinch and pinch again. Give it some slack, pull back down, reflare it. Now you don't have to just get to the hook eye magically, like walk it through those butts an extra time. You're totally fine. This should be a very relaxing process, not you know super high intensity deer hair work that's stressful. Clean that all out, walk it up to the hook eye. That six thousandths of an inch mono, by the way, is perfectly suited to working with that density of, of deer hair. No, no problems. You're not going to break your thread or anything like that. I caught a half hitch in there. I caught another one for good measure. I'm going to pull that back and get a whip finish on that hook eye. And cut it really nice and close. Now you can see just from using the hook eye, half hitches, whip finish, it's pushed back pretty nice. It's not like super in the way here, uh, but I can just tag that knot. I'm going to hit it with some CA plus, and I'm just going to hold that hair back as that knot sets up. 
Now that just squirted out a little bit fast. So I'm going to come in with a bodkin, make sure that hook eye is clean right now. And if you have any feather shafts, like this is from the Chickaboo, run that through there nice and clean, right? Don't ever leave glue in your hook eye. Now instead of coming through and butchering this with a razor blade, <clears throat> because that's what happens most of the time, I'm just going to basically pin my scissors at an angle, that would be a nice angle, like a 45 degree angle, I'm just going to very simply work my way around the head. And you can see I, it bumps the hook eye just every time I cut. I just lightly bump the hook eye every time I cut. And all you're doing is kind of shaping the blunt of the nose. And it's like a good reference point to go from that 90 degree you know, flare to just kind of a rounded snout. It just helps you gauge how much hair you got. So I like that. Now I want the bottom to be quite a bit flatter and I'm going to pull this back, but I can still get the deer hair tips. I have the collar, but this is all the head. Now I can just trim off all that on the bottom side and I'll stuck myself pretty good there. Thank you. I'm glad they make high quality steel, but I rip my thumbs apart all the time on these hooks. It's all right. Good problem to have. Now it's really hard to cut hair that's sloping back at an angle. It's really hard because as you cut, the hair just gets pushed by the scissor blade out of the way. So what you want to do here is you want to level your scissors out and use the tips so that you're not pushing the hair down as you're trimming it. It's kind of hard to do because your right hand is free balling it over here. You don't have a way to support your hand because you're holding the collar down. So go very slow. And I'll probably won't even edit through this so that you guys see how long this takes me to trim. Because, you know, you could come through here and hack this thing to pieces and whatever, save some time. But the symmetry of the head is really valuable to how it's going to ride. And you got to hold those scissors out 90 degrees to that hair almost and, and really kind of get the tips in there so you don't just push it away. You can see I'm cutting it tighter on the underside. I just got my pinky in there to help support my blade so I don't gouge anything. Get out there pinky. Nice and tight on the underside. Now I can see where I have head and I can see where I have collar. And the goal is just to blend the two. Should be nice and kind of seamless. Sweet. That's it. That is it. I should get my bright colored shirt out of the way so you can see <laughs> the epicness of that muddler head. So that's the fly, guys. It's pretty clean and simple. Really doesn't use a lot of materials. When you're done, you can definitely brush out that kind of marabou dubbing that we did. Uh, but you can also just let fish teeth do it over time. And with that soft tackle collar, it's not the biggest thing in the world. But you can always brush that out with just a big kind of brass brush tool. Uh, but that's your, that's your fly. Saddle tail, chickaboo wings, soft tackle throat, and soft tackle dubbing with a little very sparse flash. All natural muddler head. Just a simple one, head, one collar stack, one head stack. Really just simple spinning and trimming with scissors. And that's all you need. So thanks for watching. Like and comment. I'll ship you the fly. And yeah, catch you in the next one, I suppose, eventually. Pick out an ugly Christmas sweater before Christmas. See ya.